Welcome to section 6. Point, what I'm calling X. So, gentle people, there are a few odds and ends and concepts that your book kind of sprinkles all over the place. So, I just wanted one section or one lecture where I go over these topics to make sure that you guys can get through the book problems and understand some of these nuances that are associated with the equilibrium constant. All right, the first thing I want to talk about is how we can go ahead and manipulate the chemical equation and see what effects it has on the equilibrium constant. So let's start out with this equation right here. So N2O4 is going to be an equilibrium with two NO2s. So if you wanted to write the equilibrium constant, products over reactants raised to the stoichiometric coefficients. And so in this case, if I give you the equilibrium constant being 0 0.212, then that has established what this equilibrium is for this equation. Let's say I take this whole equation and I multiply it by 2. So if I go ahead and do that, the new equilibrium equation that I write is 2N2O4 is going to be an equilibrium with 4 NO2s. So if I want to write the equilibrium constant for this reaction, which I'm going to call K prime, well, the equilibrium constant is the same thing, products over reactants raised to their stoichiometric coefficients. So NO2 raised to the fourth now, and N2O4 raised to the second power. So if you look at the difference between these two equilibrium constants, what you'll notice is that it is the same equilibrium constant except that I've raised everything to the power of 2. So in essence, I took this expression and raised it to the power of 2. And so this is the take-home message. If you multiply an equation by a constant, you have to raise the equilibrium constant to that constant. And so this is a way that you can get the new k value. So in this case, the new equilibrium constant is going to be 0 0.212 raised to the second power. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at this equation. Now, if I write this equation like this, we have HCl plus NH3 goes to NH4Cl solid. Now, what I can do is I can write this reaction in the reversed order. I can write NH4Cl going to HCl and ammonia gas. So let's write equilibrium constants for each one of these reactions and see how they are related. So for the first one, let's write a KP, products over reactants raised to their stoichiometric coefficients. Since this is a solid, for my products, I'm just going to go ahead and put a 1. And on the bottom, I'm going to put the pressure of HCl times the pressure of NH3. And let's go ahead and say that this is 4 at 340 degrees Celsius. So if I wanted to go ahead and write the equilibrium constant for the second reaction, well, I do the same products over reactants raised to the stoichiometric coefficients. But now you can see how these KPs are related to each other. Since I flipped the order in which the reaction was written, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and flip my KP. Or in other words, I'm going to write the inverse expression. And so this is going to be the take-home message from this. If you guys reverse the order in which you write the reaction, you're going to take 1 over your equilibrium constant to get the new equilibrium constant for that reaction that you just wrote. All right, another thing that we can do is we can take two reactions and add them up. So in chemistry, what people like to do is we'll take reaction 1, and we're going to go ahead and add it to reaction 2. Now, remember that you can kind of think of this equilibrium arrow or any chemical equation arrow as an equal sign. So if that's the case, I can go ahead and eliminate things that appear exactly the same on both sides of the equation. So for example, I have N2 on the product side in one reaction, and I have N2 on the reactant side on the other side of the reaction. So what I can say is I can cancel these out. I have O2 on the reactant side on one reaction and O2 on the product side of the other reaction. So again, I could cancel these out. And so when I add these two reactions, I'm going to go ahead and add the things that are left over. So in this case, NO2 
gas, BR2, and then on the product side, I just have 2NOBR. So if you guys go ahead and look at this, I've got a new equation, a new equilibrium, and I want to know what the new equilibrium constant is for this reaction. Well, there's an easy way to do this. It turns out that if you add equations up, what you guys can do is you guys can multiply the k's to get the new k. So in this case, k3 is going to be k1 times k2. And so I can just take those numbers and go ahead and get my new equilibrium constant. And so with these two ideas, what you guys can do is you guys can get equilibrium constants to reactions that you have not conducted. And so this is what chemists do a lot of the time. They have a set of reactions that they've worked out and they're interested in a new reaction. And so what they could do is use these theories to calculate the equilibrium constant without conducting the experiment to get an idea of what kind of experiments they have to run to verify that theory. So let's go ahead and try to use these ideas into solving this book problem. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna give you these three reactions. Reactions one, reactions two, and reactions three. And I give you guys the information about this with all the K values associated. What I want you to do is take this slide out, go ahead and combine these equations such that you make this fourth equation. So I want you to manipulate these three equations to generate this fourth equation and tell me what the K value is. And after you're done with that, go ahead and mark the right answer on the quiz that you're about to see pop up. All right, gentle people. So here's the equation that we are going to go after. So here's my suggestion what you guys do. So the first thing I wanna do is I wanna look at those three equations and figure out which one of them contains an NaO. Now, what you guys will see is that out of those three equations, that middle equation, that second equation, contained this. And not only did it contain this compound, it contains it on the correct side. The NaO is on the reactant side. So I'm going to write that second equation. Now, I did nothing to this equation. I didn't flip it, times it by two or anything. So I'm just going to simply write the K value associated with it. And that happens to be two times... 10 to the negative fifth. All right, the next thing I wanna do is look for the next reactant. And so what I have is this one, Na2O. So again, look at those three equations, and what you guys will see is I have Na2O in that first equation. So I'm gonna go ahead and write that first equation down. And since I wrote the equation as is, I didn't manipulate it or change it, I'm gonna write the K constant as is without changing a thing to it. All right, that takes care of my reactants. So the next thing I wanna do is I wanna take care of my products. The first product I have is Na2O2. Now I can see that that is in the third equation, but here's the difference. In the third equation, Na2O2 is on the reactant side, and I want it on the product side. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna write the third equation, however, I am going to flip or write it in the reverse order. All right, so now I'm gonna go ahead and write the equilibrium constant for this reaction I wrote. So again, this is gonna be the third reaction, and so it says that this is five times 10 to the negative 29th. But since I reverse the order of the equation, I have to go ahead and flip this or take the inverse. So you can put one over five times 10 to the negative 29th, or you can go ahead and raise that to the negative one. So now what I can do is I can go ahead and add these equations up. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and cross out terms that appear on both sides. So I see that I have two sodiums on my reactant side and I have two sodiums on my product side. So I'm going to eliminate those. The next thing you will see is I have oxygen. So I have one whole oxygen here, but a half an oxygen and a half an oxygen 
Well, that goes our heads and corresponds to a whole oxygen. So there's a whole oxygen if I add those two up on the product side, and there's a whole oxygen on the reactant side. Now let's go ahead and write the leftovers from this reaction. I have NaO plus Na2O is an equilibrium with Na2O2 plus Na. And so what you guys can see is I generated that equation that I was after. And so remember this new equation, so I'm just gonna call this K4, is going to be K2 times K1 times K3, but I'm gonna take the inverse of K3 because I had to reverse that reaction. Now, if you go ahead and do the math to this, what you get is that K4 equals 0 0.08. Well, I hope that made sense to you, Chem1B, and remember to stay safe.